surface right. a little bit higher. That's it. Okay. So uh, if you can talk to me a little bit about um, what aspects or, 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 or like any anything that that didn't compute with you like because it's out of the ordinary you waking up one day and just saying I want to be a Muslim Bismillah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu I would like to start off by saying that all praise and thanks and gratitude belong to Allah, the Most High and the Most Merciful. Today I'm joined with a very special guest. Um, first of all, I'm honored to have you. For our viewers, uh, I'm joined with Habib, formerly known as James Melvin LeBlanc. Correct? Forgive me if I mess up the accent. <laughs> but if, if, if we can... If we can um, just cut right to the chase, if you want to tell the viewers, you know, a little bit of the, a little bit about your past, uh, who you were uh, originally, uh, maybe uh, your parents, and, um, and 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 yeah, reveal the news. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let Let's start with the parents. Uh, my mother is uh, United Church uh, Irish on her mother's side. Uh, my father is uh, French Acadian, uh, Catholic background. So with this, I, I ended up going to different churches, and I also went to uh, the United Church for a while, and I ended up going to the Catholic Church where I was actually confirmed as a Catholic. Normally, you do this when you're younger now, but you can still do it with when you're older. And I ended up being a Eucharistic minister. A Eucharistic minister means you help the priest in regards to serving communion. Mm. So like the, the, the wine in the host or the wine in the, the, which is supposed to be the body and blood of Christ. Right. So okay. when you look at this and when I looked at this, uh, there's, there's a scripture that says, uh, feed my sheep. Uh, he's, Jesus is talking to Peter. Uh -huh. And if you love me, feed my sheep. Uh -huh. So I'm looking at this and taking on that responsibility for hosts. Because right. a lot of times when you, you have a large congregation, you are saying this phrase over and over again. So it can be like a hundred times or more during, a, or during communion. It never got dull or boring with me because each time, because it was a different person, and making that connection with that person... It was something new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, fast forward to to having some conversations with a brother from from Pakistan, okay. and and learning about you know comparing the two of Christianity and Islam. Okay. And when you look at this, and you you know you're asking uh, about a. A turning point. Uh, to me, I think the true tr turning point was that I couldn't grasp the concept of the, the Trinity mm. because to me it didn't make any sense. Uh, I may go into detail later on, okay. but to me, the concept that there's there's only one God, He doesn't have any children. He doesn't have any companions. There's no one equal to him. He doesn't need anything. He w he always was. He always will be. No matter if everything else is destroyed and there's nothing, Allah would still exist. Okay. And when you look at this, and and when you're looking at forgiveness for sins, mm -hmm. you don't need to go through a mediator. There's you don't have. To, you go directly to the Creator, okay. who is Allah. Okay. The one and true and only God. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this, you, you, you say, Allah, forgive me for my sins. And it's not just that. It's, it, there's certain words that you use in Arabic mm -hmm. that points this out. But it, you, you also have the English to better understand this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk to me about 
So you mentioned the word Allah, and um, a lot of Christians. Um, I mean, I mentioned um, I mentioned one of my manager at work that um, you know throughout the th across the, across the city, you know, there's hotels, there's motels, and in in every hotel you'll find a, next to the bed there's a drawer, and you pull it out, pull the drawer open, and there's uh, you'll always find you'll always like 99% find a Bible. Right. It's always the Gideon. Yes. The Gideon. So the Gideon, the Gideons are very proud because they they've converted the Bible into so many languages, and they correct me if I'm mistaken. It's the King's James version, the Gideon King's yeah. James version Bible. Yes. But you also notice when they translate it into Arabic, mm -hmm. the word that they use for God is actually Allah. Wow. You, that was uh, man. That that was just coming out of just on the on the tip of my tongue, basically. So my question was, it's well, because it's interesting because I myself I'm I'm ignorant in terms of Christianity. So for me, um, I always say Paul Dyers, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, the biggest ignorance is rejecting something you have you know nothing about. So that's why I wanted to sit with you and ask. If Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, if they say the Trinitarians, one is three is three and one and one and three, yes. right? But why is why is there Allah in the Arabic version of the Bible so many times? Because for Jesus so loved the world. Very famous passage we know i think if i'm not mistaken well, from no, john it's for it's for actually the quote is for god so loved the world for god that, so loved the world okay sorry yeah yes okay. that, that god gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life right so when you're looking at this this is but we and I, and I got to be careful with this because when you're looking at scripture especially when it comes to the bible uh, we're not sure of the original text and because of the translation from the language that it was to 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 basically Greek okay. no sorry no sorry sorry Aramaic sorry. Aramaic and then it was translated to uh, Latin okay and then to, to English I so see. you look at the different translations that I went to before it went to English mm -hmm. you're going to lose something in the translation itself mm. and a lot of times people would write down footnotes and of what things were but yeah. they, they compiled it all together as being scripture instead of looking at it as a separate item gotcha. altogether okay that's like taking a study bible now mm -hmm. and have somebody 200 years in the future taking this mm -hmm. and put it all together as one Bible with right. all the study notes and somebody else scribbling on the side mm -hmm. and creating a whole and it would be totally different sayings than what right yeah so not necessarily not necessarily tampered and fabricated but it's just it's just the 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 compiling was very uh, done in a haphazard or like done like like it, very, it wasn't done in, in a, it wasn't done in a way that it, it should have been done okay and uh, their interpretation of uh, you know was inspired by God that that was another phrase that always okay like it's one thing okay I can inspire you to do something and you yeah. do it yeah like to, to write something I inspire you to write a poem yeah. right okay. it's another thing for me to actually uh, ask you to be a scribe and for me to tell you something and this is what you write down yeah okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so when you look at the Quran mm -hmm. these are the words that are coming from Allah to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him mm -hmm. and these were eventually written down okay but these were when they were written down they were written down word for word which is different than you writing something down that you were inspired to write mm -hmm. and not me telling you what to write. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess the only thing that was coming in my mind during this time... Uh